So glad. Oh, so did Mr. Snappy Doodle. What are you doing here? <gasps> you know what? I'm going to take you on a trip. Hey, you match. How cool you match the decor. Look at the green. Whew. All right. Let's get serious, Mr. War. It is Go Math. Yeah, as opposed to that other program that never works called Stop Math. Yeah, we don't want that program. Go Math, lesson 8.5. Let's take a look at our objective here our kind of our goal interpret division with fractions we have an essential question here which i absolutely love the essential questions because they're just so essential okay yeah 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 drum roll on that one here we go it says how can you use diagrams equations and story problems to represent division you know i've always wanted to know that my entire life Today, I get to learn it. How exciting. Well, let's go ahead and unlock the problem here. Eliza has six cups of raisins. She divides the raisins into quarter cup servings. How many servings does, uh, does she have? You can see that you can use diagrams, equations, story problems to represent division. The first question here says, how many quarter cups are in one cup. Well, if we have a quarter, that means we have four. We'd need three more to make one whole. That's kind of a nice one. Right? Yeah, we need four for one quarter cups to make one cup. Now, how many cups does Elisa have? Well, it says that she has six cups up there in the problem. Easy, boy, easy. So, little fella, are you learning some math here? <laughs> anyway, so we said draw a diagram to solve. All right, let's go ahead and do that. This is draw six rectangles to represent the number of raisins. Draw lines to divide each rectangle into Fourth. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. There we go. We have our six rectangles, and I've already divided them into fourths because we were wanting to have quarter cups. And we show that there's one, two, three, four quarter cups in one cup. Now I have the rectangles representing the uh, cups of raisins. So to find six divided by one quarter, count the total number of fourths in the six rectangles. That's a lot of counting, but I bet we could use a little bit of multiplying because we have one, two, three, four. So we're taking four multiplied by the six cups. And just like that, we get 24. Oop, I wrote on his tail. Sorry, my friend. Now, six divided by, this is going to be the one quarter, I'm assuming they want us to write this problem, is going to equal 24. This becomes our division equation. Now, so Eliza has, she's going to have 24 servings then. Oh, wait, what happened to my turtle? Come on down. Hey, we want you to come down. Oh, okay, I didn't mean to write on your back. I'm sorry. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Really, it was an accident. Okay, yeah, there, see? You're good, you're good. Yeah, all right, let's move on. Now, this is example one, write an equation to solve. This is four friends share one quarter of a gallon of orange juice. What fraction of a gallon of orange juice does each friend get? It says we have to write an equation. And look, we're even getting into something called variable. Very cool. So this, this variable here is n. Now, we have one quarter divided by, well, we write the equation. And this is the size of that that grew. So one quarter divided by four would fit here then. Step two says write a related multiplication equation. So one quarter times, well in this case, we already know, we don't know what n is. So if we put one quarter times, and again, we're going to go ahead and put one quarter. Well, we're writing one quarter times one quarter because we actually have, here shows the whole, like the whole gallon, okay? The whole gallon of orange juice. Now here we have the one quarter of the gallon and of that one quarter of the gallon they're going to share with four friends. So you see how we end up with a quarter of a quarter. And that's really what we have. And a quarter of a quarter means one fourth times one fourth. Okay? Or a quarter times one quarter giving us one sixteenth because we just multiply the numerators together then the denominators and we get one sixteenth. So our variable n which was our unknown now equals one sixteenth. So each friend will get one sixteenth of a gallon of orange juice. Cool. All right. Next page. 
Ding! Now write a story problem, then draw a diagram to solve. Alrighty, we have four divided by one third. Mm, okay, choose the item you want to divide. Now think, your problem should be about, about how many groups of one third are in four holes. So possible items could be four sandwiches, could be four feet of ribbon, could be four apples. I like the fact we have to write our own story problem. This really will demonstrate good mastery. So write a story problem to represent four divided by one third using the item you chose. Describe how it is divided into thirds then ask how many thirds there are. Okay, well they gave us some clues here. I'm an apple kind of guy, you know, a apple a day keeps the doctor away so I'm going to choose apple and let me choose a name who should I put in this problem let me choose how about Andrew yeah I like the name Andrew has four apples I uh, will say that if he cuts them uh, into thirds how many apple slices will he have cool yeah I like that bright pink very nice hey turtle where turtle go come back turtle where are you you're supposed to follow me onto the next page, dude. Come on. Oh, no. I didn't mean to do that, really. Yeah, you're like, sure you did. Sure you did. Okay, there you are. Cool. No snapping at that boy, okay? He's studying. Okay, so now we have the 4 divided by 1 third. Just draw a diagram to solve. All right. Well, 4 divided by 1 third. If you have 4 whole apples and then you're cutting each apple into thirds, well, 3 times 4 is 12. You write a story problem, then draw a diagram to solve. For example, three. So one half divided by five. Uh, choose the item you want to divide. Think. Your problem should describe one half of an item that can be divided into five equal parts. Write a story problem to represent one half divided by five using the item you chose. Describe how it is divided into five equal parts. Then ask about the size of each part. So to do a word problem, well, what am I going to pick? Well, you know what? As much as I really, really love pizza, I am going to use the pizza problem. Let's share, you know? Sharing is caring. So I'm going to go ahead and choose a name because my problems will be about a person. Let me see here. Who would be most willing? I know. Cassandra. Wouldn't she be willing to share her pizza, her half a pizza? I would hope so. Cassandra says she has one half of a, I was going to put scrumptious pizza. Okay, we'll just put pizza. Make it a little bit faster. A little lines there just so that you don't get confused if they're number twos. Kind of a habit I have. Okay, so Cassandra has half of a pizza. She wishes to share her pizza with, what do you know, with five friends. That's right. Friends are to the end. Okay, and so my question has to be, so what fraction of pizza will each friend receive? And of course, that's a question mark. Now draw a diagram to solve. Well, I have to actually show a diagram as well. Draw a diagram. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. So my diagram will look like this. And voila, there's my pizza. I went with the whole circle for my pizza. So now I'm looking at it and I'm saying, now here's my half a pizza. The half a pizza that I have is right here. This here is not. And so I'm dividing that half a pizza by five. These basically represent the other part of the pizza that was not, well, was not even there. I didn't share this side of that. So when I divided my half a pizza in five, because this is my whole, the whole unit of pizza, this whole pizza has actually been divided into tenths. That would mean that each slice of pizza here represents one tenth. And I can write by one tenth here. Two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, five tenths. Even though this was the halfway mark, of the pizza, one slice of that half becomes one tenth. So one half divided by five is going to equal one tenth. And I can always check my work on that. That's equal to, I can take my one tenth multiplied by five. Okay, that becomes one times five over 10, which is five over 10, which we recognize as being one half. And there you go. Isn't that just wonderful? And where's my turtle? Turtle dude, snapping turtle, where are you? I'm sorry, friends. It's another end to a math video, and I guess the turtle is going to have to... Ooh, boy, he's pretty good. He got underneath the letters. Anyway, it's time to sign off. My friends, my jungle friends, as always, live long and prosper. 